Hi everyone, welcome back to A Better Biomed. Today, I have a treat for you. We're gonna be repairing this Zeiss microscope foot control. Now the problem with the Zeiss microscope foot controls is that they have a super long cord, and even though it's got a pretty durable jacket, it gets slashed and it gets cut all the time. This would be my third or fourth that I've repaired in the last two weeks. What we're gonna do, as you can see right here, that this one has got a gash right here in the outer jacket and right here oh jeez if you guys know me you know that I hate electrical tape and any tape that I find on cords it's it's a dead giveaway that there's a problem so you can see right here that the outer jacket has also got a little gash in it and what that little gash will allow it to do is some moisture will get down in the cord. Not only can you not clean it effectively, but also it'll corrode the wires that are down inside there. So it's best that we cover that up with waterproof shrink tube or we can record with one of these. This is a Zeiss foot control record kit. So I could technically just install this. This is very expensive. The foot control is extremely expensive. So instead of wasting this right now on what was really just a superficial damage, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to fix one by depinning the connector right here and repinning it after we put our shrink tube on. And it's gonna be a dual layer waterproof shrink tube. We're gonna repin it, reassemble it, and uh, Test it out. It should be good to go. All right, guys, stay tuned. So the first step, what we're going to do is we're going to disassemble the connector here and inspect it and see if there's any yanked wires. And to disassemble this, there's two flathead screws right on the sides. Look at that. It's coming right out. Somebody didn't use Loctite. We're going to take our fasteners as we disassemble the connector and place your connector fasteners in a little container. I'm going to use this Apple iPhone box. At least the iPhone's good for something. Haters. <laughs> Alright, the next fastener that we are going to take out is this one right back here, the stud. You can see that it's slotted in the end. Unscrew that stud, pull it out, and you want to be careful. Right here we have a little latch that the stud screwed through. We're gonna take that, set it to the side. And as you take the shielding off, I want you to notice something right back here. There's actually a, a pin that holds your spring-loaded catch. So as you take the shield off, there's gonna be a plastic insulator inside it. You can set that aside and notice your spring-loaded catch because this pin nothing is keeping it in you can see I can push it and it wants to pop out the other side very easily so be wary of that because if that pops out you will lose this spring so take notice pin right there it's not a roll pin it's just a solid pin it's just pressed in and it's held in place by the shielding one of the next things that we're gonna do is right here there's two flathead screws that hold your cord retainer or your strain relief. So we're going to go ahead and take those guys apart. So what I do is I loosen one up quite a bit and then the other one I'm going to take out completely and that'll allow us to swing that cord keeper out of the way so we can take the cord out. All the time I'm doing this I'm being weary of this spring-loaded pin. I'm going to try and keep it in this time. I've disassembled that and you have to compress it to put it all back together and it's kind of a pain so from now on when I disassemble these connectors I just leave that pin in and I just am very weary of it as I'm disassembling. Okay so the fasteners that hold the cord keeper are very very tiny. So make sure you set those off to the side. You can see my cord keeper is out of the way. Now my cord can come up. 
And the next thing that you need to do is take photos of your connector. Now from what I've seen, it's the exact same cord and the exact same foot control for the Opni microscopes and the Penteros. So it should be the same pinout. But just in case, take photos of your connector, both sides, and make sure that you get it at different angles because wires could be hidden behind other wires. So I take a photo at this angle and a photo at that angle and then flip it, photo at this angle, photo at that angle to make sure I got every single one of those wires. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave a description of the pinout for my connectors anyway, which they all should be the same, but just in case, I'm gonna leave my pinout in the description below so that you guys have a reference just in case you have a cord yanked out and some of your wires are yanked off their pins, you don't know where they go, go ahead and look in the doobly-doo down below. Maybe I can help you out. So now we have the cord disassembled. We are ready to depin all of these. And that's quite a few of them. So we're gonna go ahead and set this guy up in a vise and we're gonna start desoldering them. Now that I have photographed my connector on both sides and I've documented all my wire placements, I'm gonna go ahead and start depinning it. To do that, my soldering iron is already up to temperature. Clean it up really good. Use a set of long tweezers. I start the first pin. Melt the solder and very, very slightly almost use the weight of the tweezers to pull the wire from the pad. And as you can see, it's going to go quite quickly. You're going to finish the whole entire connector so all your wires are separated. Once all your wires are disconnected from the connector, you're going to go ahead and straighten them out as much as possible. I just kind of give them a little bit of a twist. What we're going to do is fold the wires over like so, so we can put the shrink tube on the cable. Show them all the way through. Once the wires are almost all the way through, it's going to be very difficult to pull it. So you can grab your pliers, your tweezers, and just give it an assist. As you can see I'm doing right here. Just a little bit at both sides, like so, and it will come right through. Okay, so now you can see I've got my shrink tube to repair the outer jacket. I'm going to slide it all the way down the cable to the site of the repair. And then I'm going to go ahead and heat shrink it. So I'm going to go ahead and put the cord in a vise. So it makes this whole process a little bit easier. And I'm going to move the shrink tube to the side of the repair. And now I'm going to heat it up with the heat gun. Start at one end first, shrink one end all the way down, that way there it keeps it in place, and then work the heat down the tube. So the technique that I use is to heat the cord on one side and just rotate the cord so that I get all sides of the heat shrink tube. A good indicator that you have done a good job is there will be a little bit of glue that comes out both sides of the shrink tube. Since we are using a dual layer shrink tube, gives it a nice watertight bond. And there's no more wrinkles in the tube, which means this repair is now ready to move on to the next step.
reassembling the connector. Now that the strain relief is almost completely tightened down, I'm going to do one of the most important steps because a lot of the damages are caused by yanking of the cord because the strain relief comes loose. So I put a little bit of Loctite, Loctite Red, and the fastener on each side and then finish tightening it down all the way to a good stopping point. And that will take care of a good share of the damages to these connectors. The second thing that we gotta do is we have to go through and we have to correct the tinning on each one of these pins. And in order to do that, what I do is I take a hot iron and just drag it down the pin and it corrects all the anomalies that happen when you separate a wire from the pin like sometimes there'll be like little solder spikes and stuff on there because what we want to do is we want to prep it for when the wire connects this is very very important to go ahead and prep your pins and then prep your wires so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and check the ends of every wire to make sure that there's enough exposed conductor and make sure that each and every wire end has got some solder on it because what we're going to do is we're going to take the wire and we're going to lay it right on the prepped solder pad and then you're just going to basically touch it with the iron and that will affix the wire to the pad and it's going to be very quick as long as you prep the wire and you prep the pads correctly the whole thing is going to go very very quickly so now that the cord strain relief has been loctited and tightened down correctly. We're going to go back according to the pinout and we're going to attach each individual wire to their appropriate pin. And to do this, I take a set of long tweezers like this. I set the wire that's been prepped over the pad that's been prepped and I just touch the iron to it and hold it. I do believe that this is leaded solder so it takes a little while for it to cool off. Now that the wires are all connected, I've checked every single connection to make sure that there's no cold solder joints. And it's time to reassemble the connector. When you reassemble the connector, make sure that your insulating plastic is located in the bottom. I've got all my parts right here. Check my pin to make sure that the pin is in all the way for the spring-loaded catch. It's nice and centered. And then what you're going to do is you're going to squeeze the wires together a little bit because that shield is going to fit right over this. So what I do is I just gently nestle the wires in there leave a little bit of a gap at the top that's when this little catch you can see the little metal catch right here it fits into a groove and you kind of rock the connector and you can see right here right there's the catch it's in its groove I push that end in first and slowly ease the second side in until your holes are exposed and you're ready for some Loctite. Love some Loctite guys. So I start with the flathead screws. I just get them started. Sometimes that plastic shield will get down here in the second screw hole <laughs> so here's a little trick take your soldering iron that's still hot just kind of wiggle it around that hole real quick it melts whatever plastic is blocking your screw and you're ready for your second flathead screw okay once both of the flathead screws are close to being all the way down not all the way down it's when I take the slotted stud, this one right here, put a little bit of Loctite on its threads, 
and thread it in with my fingers into the front part of the connector. I tighten down the stud first, then the two flathead screws on the side. Check the pins. If you heat up the pins too much while you're soldering, it will destroy the bit of material that retains the pin. So one of the final checks that I do is I put my finger on all the pins to make sure that none of them press in. And if you do have one that presses in, you can pull it back out with some pliers and then go in on the back side and put silicone all along the wires and along the, the connecting pins on the inside and then close it back up and leave it in a vise overnight facing down and all that silicone it will harden on the inside and your pins will be retained permanently so that's a way in case you melt a little bit of this plastic because you were soldering the pin too long that's, that's how you can still save the connector here we go so I've tested it for tension and my spring catch is still there everything looks like it's still working fine the next thing to do is clean these pins you can see that the pins almost always have a little bit of corrosion on them so I'm gonna go ahead and get a brass brush and then give them a good brushing right before I smith this back into service here I've got a regular brass brush clean them up a little bit not too aggressive brings that connector back to a nice shiny brand new look look at those pins that looks fantastic look at that. okay one final step the most important step of all is to take the newly repaired foot control down to a microscope and give it a full function check just to be sure and make sure you press more than one button at once, like focus and zoom, and uh, the head release to move the head around. Make sure you test all the functions in all different orders to guarantee that all these wires are connected properly and that the cord wasn't damaged internally. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you liked the video. This is repairing a Zeiss microscope foot control. Hope you liked the video. Thanks, guys.